worked together in the community for a long time, and I can't believe you retired. Um, we'll be sad. We appreciate all the, the work that you've done and the work that we will continue to bring you in as a volunteer in the future. So, <laughs> thank you, Art. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to address you today. I want to begin by thanking and uh, thanking you also for honoring me as your legislator of the year last summer. I have to tell you that it really um, was one of the highlights of my career. Truly honored. But at the same time, I want to stop and say this is really about some of my, uh, my colleagues that I want to recognize today. My colleagues who shared their personal experiences, who touched us all last year and today with their, with their stories. And so I want to do a special recognition to Representative Jim Wilson, to Representative Sue Schaefer, Representative Bob Gardner, Representative Dave Young, Representative uh, Lois Land, uh, Landgraf, and also Representative Jonathan Singer, who uh, is sitting right over there. So thank you. It is because of their efforts uh, that we continue to have a lasting effect on increasing awareness and services for persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The personal experiences and stories that they share both last year and this year during our resolution were an inspiration, and I carry it with me. And I also want to recognize the hard work and dedication of Tim O'Neill, Mary Lou Walton, Jamie Martin, and everyone at Alliance. Your commitment to putting people first and making Alliance a person-centered organization does not go unnoticed, and we owe you a huge debt of gratitude. helping persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities live the fullest lives they can and become members of, our, of the community. The community-centered board system has been instrumental in moving 2,500 individuals out of institutions and into home communities. This allows people to become an integral part of their neighborhood and their workplace. Our challenge is facilitating full community engagement that will lead to acceptance, inclusiveness, and participation so that no one is left on the fringe. They deserve the opportunity to live a life of dignity. We need to empower them by focusing on what they can do and set them up for success from the onset so they can recognize the opportunities and choices they have. Of course, cannot forget the day-to-day -day needs. But just as important is the engagement in the community. Helping persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities open doors and find new opportunities to integrate. Long-term success relies on the entire community taking a stake and the person-centered focus at Alliance, along with the levels of community engagement, are helping to ensure that everyone has choice opportunity, and dignity. Making sure we are always people-focused when we're talking about intellectual and developmental disabilities needs to remain our number one priority. Persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities are not abstract. They are our neighbors. They are ourselves. These people are children like Everett who's turning six tomorrow. Everett is developmentally behind in speech and reading. Like every child, Everett wants to be accepted and wants to succeed. His mom is doing her best to advocate for him, but the schools and the teachers can't put Everett in a specific box. So they don't know how to help him be successful. The message that this little boy gets from the people who are supposed to be his greatest champions is that maybe he just isn't smart, or something is wrong with him, or he's not trying hard enough. What a terrible message to send to a child. Recently, an advocate from outside the school asked Everett's mom if she had considered the, uh, dyslexia. 
After noticing that, he turned his letters and his numbers around. When his mom talked to his teacher, she was told they assumed she already knew. The schools lack the resources, the support to provide meaningful assistance. So Everett's mom has to find people on her own to test Everett and help her help him. We need to continue creating a culture of empathy and understanding for persons with these disabilities, a way for parents to access systems in a productive and encouraging way. Thank you all for the work that you're doing on this level to create a better understanding of these issues in our communities, workplaces, and our schools. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor on an important piece of legislation this year that Art mentioned, House Bill 1051, and I am extremely proud of Representative Landgraf, who I think is here today, <coughs> Representative Shapu, who very, very much wants to be here today, for the work that they did in bringing people together in a bipartisan fashion, because this is not a partisan issue. This is about our children. This is about our community. They recognize that, and they took great strides in that effort. House Bill 1051 will require a strategic plan to be developed to enroll persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities in home and community-based programs, services, and supports at the time they choose to enroll. The plan will include specific recommendations and bench benchmarks to achieve our full enrollment goal by the year 2020. Persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities rely on these programs and services to seek a quality of life of their choosing. And it is our goal to greatly minimize and eventually end a wait list for these services so they all can pursue a quality of life. values and guiding principles, and I am thankful for all the work that you have done to bring these issues into the light so people with intellectual and developmental disabilities can live the life of their choosing. In closing, I want to ask you a favor, because that's what legislators do. <laughs> Come invite me here and I will ask, ask a favor of you. I want to ask you, please continue your work. Keep putting people first. Never lose sight of the mission. Engaging our communities to make sure that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities are empowered to pursue opportunities, have choices, and live lives of dignity. Organizations that like Alliance are critical to making sure that we are integrating rather than isolating, creating partnerships rather than drawing lines, and ultimately, Focusing on everyone being able to live a fulfilling life based on what they can do, not based upon their limitations. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you for the honor that you have given me. Thank you mostly for all the work that you're doing. Thank you. <laughs>